Are you ready for a riveting discussion of charging port types? Good, because that's what I'm on about today. And that's because it seems like Tesla has won the war here. Okay, before we can dive into the meat of all this, I have to give you a quick primer on the different types of charging ports. You have AC ports and DC ports. The AC stuff is for your level one and two type of charging, as in something you might have set up at home. Here in North America, the connector for AC charging is called a J1772. It may also be referred to as a J plug or just a type one connector. Pretty much every non-Tesla on the market can use this type of plug. It can handle up to 19.2 kilowatts, 240 volts, and if you install a charging port at your house, this is what you'd find to charge up non-Tesla vehicles. When you jump to DC fast charging, you climb to the CCS1 connector. This is essentially a combo plug that is part J1772 on top and has two large pins below that for the fast charging. On this system, you can have up to 360 kilowatts of power flowing out. Tesla vehicles, however, have a proprietary connector called the North American Charging Standard, or NACS. This setup can dole out as much as 250 kilowatts at the moment, which is great, especially since a Tesla charger typically just works. And it was rather fortuitous for Tesla to call its charging port the North American Charging Standard, because that might wind up being the case. You've likely seen the headlines where first Ford said it would start building its cars with NACS ports. This will give Ford customers access to the majority of Tesla supercharger stations across the country. That plan begins in 2025, and Ford won't be building cars with both ports. Instead, it sounds like the plan will be for just NACS ports going forward. It's big for both automakers, but especially so for Ford customers because the amount of charging stations available to them is about to grow exponentially, and it will still allow them to use their Ford Pass app to pay for supercharger access. It's not just Ford though. GM followed suit soon after announcing essentially the same thing as Ford. Starting in 2025, General Motors is gonna build the NACS port into its electric vehicles. And to keep the ball rolling, now Rivian has come out and said it too will follow suit. Initially, this will mean supplying adapters for its R1T and R1S vehicles. But when Rivian moves to launch its upcoming R2 platform vehicles, those will be equipped with NACS ports. The goal, as stated by all automakers involved, is to push for greater EV adoption, and this move is going to open a lot of eyes to the greater potential for a better and more unified charging structure. And if NACS becomes the real standard as it now seems poised to do, that would mean that other existing charging networks would need to either offer both or move to NACS exclusively. From there, current non-Tesla EV owners would likely need an adapter going forward. The good news here though is that the charging experience is a highlight of Tesla ownership, especially compared to the charging experience with other station providers. Tesla is opening the door to removing one of its key competitive items, but it also opens the door to make the Tesla supercharging network the place to charge up for any and all future electric vehicles, which is a pretty darn big deal.